All right, it's been 20 seconds, and as you can see, the connection has timed out. And what I'm going to do is I'll put in, once again, the address to connect to the Andean firewall device, https colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.15 colon 10.443. And I'll just back to that, hit enter in the browser, and we should reconnect to the Endian firewall device. I've reconnected to the Endian firewall device, and now it's time to register to the Endian network. Now, if you don't have an Endian Network account set up already, you'll just hit Next, and you'll see that on the next screen, it says Register to the Endian Network. Please create a new Endian Network account and follow the steps for registration. Now, what you're going to want to do here is click this link and set up an Endian Network account at the Endian.com website. Now, this is a link that's going to take you to the site where you need to register your account. Now, you're going to need to have internet connectivity to do this. And in this case, I've already gone to the Indian website and set up my Indian network account. So I'll hit back and I'll say, do you already have an Indian network account? I'll choose yes, since I already have it. And I'll hit next. All right, now on this screen, I have to register the Indian firewall device. Now, I'm going to put in the account information that I've set up with my Indian network account. So I'll put in my account username and my password and the activation key that has come with my Indian firewall device. Now this process of registering your Indian firewall device is really important because by registering the device you'll be able to get support, you'll be able to get automatic updates, you can even take advantage of the centralized management features that come with the Indian Firewall device. So for the activation key, I have a demo activation key, which I'll use for this tutorial. And the system name that I'm setting up, Dan's Demo UTM. And my company information, so you'll put in your company, let's say, dot com, and your email address, your country, and scroll down and check mark the license agreement and click register. Now for this to work, I need to have internet connectivity up and running. So I need to be correctly connected to my ISP from the Indian firewall device and have the correct DNS server set up so that you can resolve this over the internet and register the device. All right, looks like the registration was successful. I'm given a verification screen which shows my activation code, my maintenance agreement and how many days are left. Notice it's a demo mode and my system ID, uh, my last updates and the valid from and valid until dates and all I have to do is click finish. At this point, I'm prompted once again to reconnect to the Indian firewall device. So I'm going to put in the admin username, which allows me to access the web management tool, my password, and I'll click OK. And in the end, once the initial configuration wizard is complete, you should see your Indian firewall device Indian dashboard. And from here you can see your network interfaces. You notice that they're up, link status is up, your incoming and your outgoing traffic. You can see your uplink status and your IP address that's been given to you. This will usually be your public IP address given to you by your ISP. In this case I'm connected to a router behind me so I also have a private IP address for my uplink side for my WAN IP address some status information on your Indian firewall device, the kernel version, the uptime, the maintenance, how many days are left in your maintenance agreement with your activation code, your hardware information, your CPU and memory usage, things such as that, and you're ready to go. Before I finish this tutorial, I want to point out a few quick things. Let's say you wanted to go in and change the IP addresses or the network IP address schemes for your 
green zone, your orange zone, or your blue zone? Well, what you could do is you could go right back to the network configuration and I'll hit next here. Notice you can change your red interface connection, but I'll just hit next. You can change the number of extra zones that you want to set up. I'll hit next. And you're back into your network preferences dialog. Here you could change the IP address for the green zone for the Indian network device, for the orange zone, and for the blue zone. You could also change the switch ports that they link up to. Let's say I wanted to set up an extra green zone switch port. I could just check this and then put switch port 4 also into the green zone. I'll just go back to the dashboard. Let's say you need to switch your uplink that goes out to the internet. Let's say your internet service provider went down or you're getting a new service a new internet service provider with a different type of technology or modem, what you could do is, is click on network and go to interfaces and you can see here is our uplink. There's our main uplink that's going out to the internet. Notice we had chosen Ethernet DHCP. We could create a new uplink by clicking here or we could edit this uplink by clicking this pencil which is the edit uplink button and you can see here, here's our settings. So we could change, let's say we wanted to set up a wireless modem that connects over USB that uses basically a SIM card, like a cell connection, wirelessly to connect to the internet. We could choose analog UMTS modem. All right, now we have it chosen. We would choose USB, so we'd go down to the first available USB port, USB port zero. Then we choose the modem type. You can see we could choose HSDPA. Let's say we're located in Europe. Or we could choose CDMA. Let's say if we're located in the United States. For HSDPA, you're going to have to give it the access point name. So you'd give it APN dot your internet service provider dot com, let's say. So this would be your provider dot com. Or, now this APN, this access point name, will be provided to you by your internet, your mobile internet service provider. If you had a username and password, you could put it in here. Let's say we were using the CDMA, say located in the United States perhaps, and we could put in our username and our password here. Once again, this would be given to us by our internet service provider. And for these types of wireless modems, you have to make sure that you remove the PIN code or password from your SIM card. Oftentimes your internet service provider wants you to have a PIN code or password on your SIM card so before you connect out to the internet. So what you might have to do is you're going to have to remove that PIN code or password. Also, if you buy one of these wireless UMTS modems, you're going to need to make sure that it's Linux compatible in order to work with the Endian network device. Another choice that we could choose, let's say, is the gateway mode. Now, the gateway mode is an interesting option. Now, it's a little bit misleading. If you choose gateway mode, what that means is there is another router on the network that's functioning as the gateway router, and you're not going to use the Endian firewall device as the gateway router. So what you would do is you would put in here the IP address of the gateway, and let's say the DNS server settings that you're going to be using. And let me show you a diagram that explains this scenario a little better. In this scenario, once again, the Endian UTM Mini is not acting as the router gateway. Here's the router gateway here, here's a switch, and here's our users. So our users are going to go out to the internet through our router gateway, but notice how the Endian UTM Mini is also connected to the switch on the green zone. And in this way, the Endian UTM Mini can provide services or also be a proxy for these hosts on the network. So it could be a proxy or it could be a standalone server offering many of the server services that are available on the Endian UTM Mini. Or another thing you could do is set up the Endian UTM Mini as a transparent proxy in line. 
So in this case, here's the router gateway that we have. Notice it's connected to the Indian UTM Mini on switch port one on the green zone. But then instead, you're going to set up a second green zone port, let's say switch port two in this example, which will then go to the switch and then go to your users. In this case, this is a transparent proxy. So as the users on your network try to get to the internet, they have to go through the Indian UTM Mini, which can then be set up to filter packets silently on the network as traffic goes through the Mini and then out to the router and then out to the internet. So this is a nice option for you as well. And that's the gateway mode. You can also see here that there is a PPP over Ethernet mode. This would be if you had a DSL modem. You put in your username and password, which would be given to you by your internet service provider. You could probably leave all the other settings to the default. Or let's say you had a static Ethernet IP address. Let's say there's another router on the network, or you're given a static IP address by your internet service provider or by your network admin, then you would put your IP address in here, your subnet mask here, also the default gateway, and your DNS server information here. So these are some of the different options that are available to you for your main uplink. In this case, I'm just going to hit cancel and go back to system and leave off at the system dashboard. That concludes the initial configuration wizard tutorial. I hope you found the tutorial helpful. In the next video tutorial, I'll cover the Endian network account registration process.